Being a marketer is no sweat. You just have to manage dozens of channels, launch hundreds of campaigns, score thousands of leads, and okay, fine, it's a lot of sweat. Unless you have HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools to help you do all that and more. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. Botox Cosmetic, out of botulinum toxin A, FDA approved for over 20 years. So talk to your specialist to see if Botox Cosmetic is right for you. For full prescribing information, including boxed warning, visit BotoxCosmetic.com or call 877-351-0300. Remember to ask for Botox Cosmetic by name. To see for yourself and learn more, visit BotoxCosmetic.com. That's BotoxCosmetic.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Eye on the Enemy, powered by the Eagles Pin Pull Network. I'm your host, John Stolnes. I'm a writer for BleedingGreenNation.com, and this is the podcast that takes you behind enemy lines. We get an eye on what the enemy is doing, and this Sunday afternoon, the enemy we face is the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll be going to Ohio to take on the three and four Bengals, a team that is better than their record would indicate, if you ask me, and we got a good guest coming up here to talk about it. He's a writer for the Cincy Jungle, Jason Garrison. Cincy Jungle is the Eagle, uh, the pardon me, the Bengals SB Nation site. He's also the co-host of the Three and Out podcast. We're going to get his thoughts on what this season has looked like because, again, the record doesn't really tell the story of the 2024 Cincinnati Bengals so far. At least I don't think. We'll see whether or not he agrees and whether or not that's true. Uh, we'll get a look at the rest of the NFL slate, specifically the games that concern the Eagles, but also some of the other marquee matchups as well. And do we need to see the best game Jalen Hurts has played in years in order for the Eagles to pull off this win on Sunday afternoon? Why I think we absolutely do and why we need to get more from the passing game. Saquon Barkley's great and all, and it's been fun to watch him run, but if this team wants to win a Super Bowl, they got to get the passing game figured out. We're going to get into all that coming up here on this edition of Eye on the Enemy. But I would encourage you all to, if you haven't, subscribe to the Eagles Pin Pull Network because we've got shows coming at you pretty much every day here on this fine Eagles Network. If you really enjoyed the Bleeding Green Nation podcast feed, Man, I don't know that there's another podcast feed out there like it, but this one comes pretty gosh darn close. And so uh, you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe and check out all of the fine podcasts we have for you throughout the week. Now, this game on Sunday, absolutely a game that the Eagles can win. They can go into Cincinnati, and they can beat the 3-4 and four Bengals. The uh, Eagles obviously sitting at 4-2 and two on the season. If the Eagles move to 5-2, and two, man, their odds of winning, of getting a playoff spot increase dramatically. 75% playoff chance if they go to 5 and 2 and since 1990 teams that go 5 and 2 75% of them 3 quarters of those teams end up going to the playoffs teams that are 4 and 3 if the Eagles were to drop this game on Sunday only half of those teams end up making the postseason. So an important game for the Eagles as they continue to battle the Washington Commanders atop the NFC East. The Commanders without Jaden Daniels this week against the Chicago Bears, it looks like. So uh, an opportunity here for the Eagles to make up some ground on the first place Commanders. The Commanders uh, a half a game ahead of the Eagles. They haven't had their bye week just yet. So an important game, but a very tough matchup for the Birds. And joining me to help break this game down, Jason Garrison from Cincy Jungle, co-host of the Three and Out podcast. You can follow him on X at Jason RJ eighty three. Jason, thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And I know for the Bengals, you know, it's been a it's been a good stretch of games over the last uh, couple of couple of weeks. They've won what is it three in a row and four of uh, four out of the last five after getting off to kind of a rough start. Um, I was looking at some of the numbers. It kind of a big game for the Bengals, right? If they fall to three and five. I saw that since 1990, teams that start off three and five only make the postseason 10 and a half percent of the time. You go four and four, you make it almost a third of the time. 
So that's a big difference. Big game for the Bengals. Just real quick, kind of like what's the vibe of the team here as they enter their eighth game of the season? So the vibe of the team is uh, cautious and hopeful. I think that's kind of the vibe in the city. Uh, You know, everyone thought there won't be a slow start this year because Joe Burrow's healthy and he completed this first off season. And then they came out and the defense had, you know, was dealing with a lot of injuries and they were bad. You know, you shouldn't score 38 points and lose. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, but then, you know, they won the last couple games and the offense didn't play very well. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, the defense was healthy and, and they played really well. We're a game away from 500. I think everybody knows, everybody sees that, you know, their backs are against the wall. And every game now, unfortunately, seems like it's a do or die situation because it kind of is. Like you said, if they lose, their chances of going to the postseason are slim to none. Mm-hmm. You know, if they win, it, it's definitely increased if they can even up their record. So I think people are optimistic and hopeful but I don't think you're going to hear a lot of it out loud unless they even up their record this year or or this week. You know, the Eagles have a better record, but I think you could say the same kind of vibe exists here in Philadelphia. Uh, Until last week, every game had been, every win had been by the skin of their teeth with lots of warts. I mean, it looked pretty ugly. Uh, Last week against the Giants was the first real feel-good win this team has had, really going back over the last year, uh, where you felt just like this team's in control, they're the better team, and they're dominating the way they should. Um, Looking at that Bengals offense, you mentioned Joe Burrow with a healthy offseason. You know, they're they're three and four, but that I don't think, at least from the outside, I don't feel like that's been the fault of Joe Burrow. His numbers so far this year look pretty sparkling. 14 touchdowns, two interceptions, second in the NFL with a 110.1 passer rating, and he's got some phenomenal targets to throw to in Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. So uh, if there were issues with the Bengals passing game, it certainly doesn't look like it on the stat sheet. So what's been going on with the Eagles offense? How good has Joe Burrow looked? Is it Do the numbers not tell the real story? No, the numbers tell the whole story with him. He's been great. Joe Burrow is, I think that if you know, the, the Bengals are like one, they're one dropped uh, or they're one fumbled away hold from being 500 now. You know what I mean? Against yeah. the Chiefs, they've lost some close games. Joe Burrow has been excellent. I think if they're four and two instead of two and four, I think that he's, you know, all over the MVP conversation. Um, he's been great. The offense has been some lops like one-sided sometimes uh, especially the last couple games it seems that they just want to throw the ball just constantly just nothing but throw the ball and they don't want to run it chase brown has looked explosive when they're running the ball uh zach moss has looked okay when they're running the ball and they just for some reason didn't want to do it over the last couple of weeks um so i don't think it's anything on joe burrow he's been great when they've the games they've lost really the majority of my i, I blame the defense we're going to talk about the defense in just a second, uh, but I do want to I kind of stick with the with the offense at the moment. And I think one of the key matchups, and this is a key matchup, I think, for everybody the Bengals face, is the opposing secondary against Chase and Higgins. I know uh, last week uh, Higgins and Chase both scored. Um, they didn't rack up huge numbers uh, otherwise, but, um, you know, solid weeks from from both of those guys. And, of course, both of those guys are Pro Bowl caliber players to chase one of the one of the best talents in, in the league right now. And they're going up against an, an Eagles secondary uh, that had a good week last week, but against Daniel Jones, right? I mean, they have Malik Neighbors. They did a good job against that uh, stud rookie wide receiver, but he's coming off a multi-week layoff following a concussion. This is a a far different challenge uh, for Quinion Mitchell and Darius Slay and Cooper DeGene. The Eagles with two rookies starting in the secondary right now against a, a veteran unit like Burrow and Chase and Higgins. That would ordinarily give me some, some pause, but really Mitchell and DeGene have played really well so far here in the early going so how do you make what do you make of that matchup right now i mean i think any any defense is going to have a tough time when you're facing off not only against jamar chase but t higgins but then you've got you know the the caliber quarterback throwing them passes too but then when you also throw in you know you might be able to blanket those guys but then you also throw in mike gasecki who has shown that he you know can stretch the stretch the field uh, Andre Yusevich is their third wide receiver right now. Uh, he's going to be – he's a tough matchup. Um, any defense, I think, is going to struggle when you're dealing with two wide receivers that could and should be doubled. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Eagles – I mean, they have some good guys in the secondary, so it'll be interesting to see 
what kind of, I don't know, what kind of day Joe Burrow has. One of the things that can determine what kind of day Joe Burrow has is how much he is upright on his feet and how much of the day he's on the turf. And uh, the Eagles pass rush was the worst in the NFL through their first four games of the season. Over the last couple of weeks against some bad teams in the Browns and the Giants, the pass rush has come alive. Uh, The Eagles had six sacks in their first four games, but over the last two, 13 sacks, including eight against the Giants on Sunday. Now, one of the things Joe Burrow does, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but is he gets rid of the ball pretty quickly, right? I mean, he, he gets it, I think it's about a little over 2.7 seconds uh, per attempt, but he's been sacked 18 times this season, eighth most in the NFL. So explain to me how he's getting sacked so much to the degree that he is if, uh, if he's getting rid of the ball so quickly. It sounds like, based on the numbers, it sounds like uh, edge rushers and those guys up the middle are getting to him quickly and winning these battles quickly uh, in the rep. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the type of defenses that are being played where they don't want to let anything get beat deep, you know. Um, and some of these longer developing passes, you know, uh, he's holding the ball a little bit longer than I think a lot of people would like to see him. At the same time, I think the interior of the offensive line has struggled a little bit. Um, the Both offensive tackles have been pretty good. Mims, the rookie, has been pretty good. Um, and then left tackle Orlando Brown Jr. has been excellent. But he is questionable this weekend just because um, he left last week with an uh, injured knee. And mm-hmm. uh, he, practiced, he practiced this week, I think, both limited so far. So I don't know what's going to happen with him. Yeah, it's just some weird numbers, too. Uh, Burrow faced, has faced pressure 26% of the time this year, which is third lowest, uh, but yet eighth most sacks in the NFL. Just some yeah. uh, so some of these numbers, I, it's it's small sample size noise, too. I would imagine as the, se- as the season goes along, some of these numbers kind of uh, work themselves out a little bit. Uh, and this Vic Fangio defense, we still don't really know what to make of it now that the architect is here directing this thing. Uh, they've just felt more aggressive. I think we've seen more blitzing over the last couple of weeks coming out of the bye. Vic Fangio maybe changing some things up a little bit so uh it was a real bend but don't break kind of defense to like you're talking about burrow with some of these long developing plays uh the eagles defense the first month of the season was really getting burned with the short stuff quick hitting stuff really quick releases eagles receive eagles uh defensive backs giving far too much cushion to the receivers but i think having cooper DeGene in the starting lineup as opposed to avante maddox maybe that has kind of helped some things across the middle how if we're looking at the middle of the field, do we see uh, Chase and Higgins utilize the middle of the field? Do we Will we see either of those guys in the slot uh, to take advantage maybe of the rookie DeGene? Or do they mostly, are these mostly guys who are kind of like Brown and Smith working to the outside? So I in in the years prior when Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd was in the slot, he was Tyler Boyd's age, I think, and his ex- lack, lack of explosiveness, I think, kept him in the slot. Now that he's gone and Andre Yusevich is the third wide receiver, they've moved Chase around a lot. I expect to see Chase play out of the slot, play out of the backfield everywhere they can put him. Uh, So let's flip the script here a little bit and let's talk about the uh, Eagles offense and the Bengals defense. Um, Philadelphia's offense, ninth overall, but 17th in scoring. So getting some yards, moving the ball between the 20s, but they've had a little bit of difficulty inside the red zone. Um, One of the key matchups, obviously, is going to be the Bengals' run defense against Saquon Barkley. Uh, This week, it sure sounded like Nick Sirianni was embracing the run-first mentality or that he felt maybe this team's identity was in its run game I wrote a I wrote a story for Bleeding Green Nation this week you know that's great you know running the ball is great establishing the run is great establishing the pass wins you Super Bowls and so I don't know that this is a long-term trend here but for right now Saquon Barkley is third in the NFL in rushing yards averaging a hundred and nearly 110 yards a game which is second behind Derrick Henry and the Bengals defense ranks tied for 21st against the run, but in yards per game and yards per game, but is 12th in average yards per carry right now. So kind of an interesting difference in, in the numbers right there. How, how much of a chance do you give the Bengals to win this matchup going up against Saquon? So the Bengals struggled terribly against the run over the first few weeks of the season. They were without McKinley Jackson. They were uh, Chris Jenkins didn't play the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, They didn't. They lost both B.J. Hill and Sheldon Rankins, both their starting defensive tackles to hamstring injuries for a couple weeks. Everyone's back healthy now. Um, In the Ravens game, they held Henry to like 
3.2 yards a carry until his overtime 51 yard carry. Mm. And then against uh, Nick Chubb last week, they held Nick Chubb to two yards per carry. So the, I think the big difference here is whether or not they feel comfortable putting the ball in, in, in Jalen Hurts' hands. Mm. You know, I, I think they had no issue whatsoever saying, oh, we're fine with whatever quarterback is out there for the Browns. Go ahead and throw the ball because you can't. Uh, so they really sold out to stop Nick Chubb. I don't think they can really do that against um, Saquon Barkley, but I think the run defense will be much better against him than they were in the first few weeks of the season against the lesser runners. Right, because, I mean, you do have to respect the the guys on the outside. Jalen Hurts throwing the football. He's taken care of the football the last couple of weeks. No turnovers from Jalen Hurts. First time he's had back-to-back games where he hasn't turned the ball over in, uh, I think, about a year or so. So it's been, um, you know, he didn't do anything spectacular last week against the Giants. Only threw 14 times uh, in a game where they didn't really need him. But I don't think that's going to be the case this Sunday. They're going to need him. And I think, you know, the return of A.J. Brown has been a, a big help to the offense, even though, you know, he didn't get the ball a lot last Last week, he did have a long touchdown. The Eagles are 3-0 and with A.J. Brown in the lineup. Devontae Smith is uh, quite a good running buddy over there. Uh, the Eagles are lacking a third wide receiver right now, and they're kind of lacking their, their tight end. Uh, Dallas Goddard is going to be out once again. Grant Calcaterra is going to be in the starting lineup. But this also feels like a key matchup. Brown and Smith against the Bengals secondary. And I think in, in particular, one of the guys who it seems to me he's having a, a little bit of an issue this year. Uh, is, uh, oh, geez, I just lost the name. Uh, uh, Taylor Britt, uh, right? I mean, yep. he's, he, he's been struggling. I think I saw giving up a 118 passer rating this year. That seems to me the guy the Eagles are going to target. Would that be fair? Yeah, I think that would be fair. Uh, they lost Dax Hill for the season, so they're starting Cam Taylor Britt and DJ Turner on the outside. And then they have Mike Hilton on the inside. Now, Kil- Mike Hilton's just an excellent uh, uh, slot corner just because of what he can do in the box. Cam Taylor Britt is very, very good. And he can pull off some of these insane interceptions and he'll have a highlight game. And then the next week he'll give up a hundred yards himself, you know, Mm -hmm. and then he'll have another good game and then have another bad game. Mm -hmm. Um, He'll have to be at his absolute best. There is no doubt in my mind that the Eagles wide receivers are going to be among the best that they're going to see, if not the best they'll see outside of practice, you know, with Chase and Higgins. Um, And, uh, he's going to have to have an outstanding game because if he doesn't the whole defense has to change and if you if you have to worry more about aj brown than you have to worry about saquon barkley then you know then the the whole defense could collapse if taylor Mm -hmm. Britt can't together so i expect him to be targeted um hopefully he's up for it he's ready for it uh, one last matchup here to, to to look at. Obviously, the the Bengals' pass rush is, is going to be key. Can they get to Jalen Hurts? Hurts has taken sacks, four sacks on just 14 attempts last week. Uh, the Eagles, without Jordan Mailata, their starting left tackle, the Pro Bowler left tackle, he's being replaced by Fred Johnson, who's very good in the run game, uh, very suspect in pass blocking. And looks like the matchup is Trey Hendrickson against Fred Johnson. Uh, Hendrickson with seven sacks on the year. He has uh, three two-sack games already this season. That feels feels like a matchup that is heavily in the Bengals' favor. So comment on that matchup, but then also on the Bengals' pass rush in particular. How does it uh, how does it work as a whole? Are they a, are they a blitz-heavy unit, or do they rely mostly on the front four to get things done? So in general, as like a scheme earlier in the season when they had all their guys that were out and Sam Hubbard was playing with a hamstring issue, I think that they relied a little bit more on the blitz. But in general, they rely on – Sheldon Rankins and B.J. Hill applying pressure from the middle and then Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard or Miles Murphy coming from the edge. Sam Hendrickson, or sorry, Trey Hendrickson, I think is a top five rusher in the NFL. He's absolutely just a menace to every quarterback. And we're very familiar with Fred Johnson in Cincinnati. He's a former Bengal. Right. So with this matchup, I expect Trey Hendrickson to just absolutely go off. But again, this could be one of those things that could hurt the Eagles in a way where Saquon Barkley has to sit in the backfield more than they would like him to, you know, to help Fred Johnson out. So or or a tight end is going to be, you know, Dallas Goodert gets laid off the line because he has to help chip Trey Hendrickson. So it'll be interesting to see how the Eagles try to combat that. But yeah, this this matchup overall, I'm actually writing right now matchups to watch. And that's the first one I mentioned is Hendrickson versus versus um, 
uh, Johnson. Yeah, and I think Jack Stoll, you might see him. The Eagles just signed him to the practice squad. He might be, uh, he, he might play a role in doing some of that chipping that you're talking about right now. He's that's uh, one of the few, Jack Stoll can't pass it, catch a pass to save his life, but one thing he can do is block a little bit. So uh, they may end up uh, they may end up using him in that role, maybe some two tight end sets. Although, again, with, with Goddard out, Dal- uh, Grant Cocatera does not have a lot of confidence oh. that, uh, that uh, Jalen Hurts is, you know, he's been throwing to Calcaterra a little bit more over the last couple of weeks, but, you know, he's not going to be a heavy target guy, uh, kind of like Goddard normally would be. So, um, and I think this, I, I say Goddard's out. That's the that's the thought as of this recording. I mean, it could still change. He's questionable. He was out last week. Um, it's It sounded like a multiple-week injury when Nick Sirianni first talked about it. So, um, we'll, we'll see what happens once the, the, the final Friday injury report comes out. Um, so, as we look at this matchup here, uh, Jason, let's... Let's lay it on the line. I mean, it, I I don't feel great about this game from the Eagles' standpoint. You know, I think the Bengals are playing really well. It's in Cincinnati. Uh, uh, the Bengals, again, came into the season as a potential Super Bowl contender. There's certainly some matchups that I think favor the Eagles, but a few that favor the Bengals as well. How do you think? How do you see things shaking out here on Sunday? I I think because I, I think these two, two teams are very similar to each other. I, I know it doesn't reflect in the record, but I think both offenses have struggled at times when we weren't expecting them to. Um, I think purely because the Bengals are at home, it's that white tiger game. Everyone gets hyped up about the crowd will be into it. And the fact that their backs are against the wall, I just think it's going to be uh, one of those things where they are going to be in desperation games until they kind of dig themselves out of this hole that they are still very much in. The offense hasn't hasn't been great over the last couple of weeks. The defense has stepped up. I I kind of feel a complete game coming. I like their chances. Um, it's going to be a tough. I kind of expect a shootout, but I do expect the Bengals to win this week. If you're a facilities manager at a warehouse and your HVAC system goes down, it can turn up the heat, literally. But don't sweat it. Granger has you covered. Granger offers over a million industrial grade products for all your operations, including warehouse HVAC maintenance. And even better, they offer access to experts and fast delivery, so you and your warehouse can both keep your cool. Call 1 800 Granger, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Yeah, it feels to me like a game the Bengals need a little bit more than the Eagles do, specifically because of the records. Uh, both teams are fighting in the division. Both teams are in tough divisions right now, but I think the uh, I think the AFC North is a little bit tougher at the moment uh, with, with with what the Ravens are doing right now. So, uh, but should be a very interesting game. Like I said, between two, I think evenly matched teams. These two teams are very similar, uh, and uh, you know, an Eagles loss in Cincinnati against a good Bengals team, I don't think would be. Um, something for Eagles fans to get overly worried about, but I'll give my prediction a little bit later in the show. In the meantime, make sure you head on over to Cincy Jungle, the uh, Bengals SB Nation site, and check out Jason's podcast, 3 and Out, if you want to get an uh, an inside look on what's going on with the Bengals ahead of this Sunday's game. That's the place to do it. Jason, thanks for coming on Eye on the Enemy. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, well, I mentioned at the top of the show, in order for the Eagles to win this game and really to, I think, sustain success here in 2024, they've got to be able to throw the football. This the the current trend right now harkens back to 2021 a little bit when um, when the Eagles just they ran every they ran all over the place. They ran everywhere because early in the season. The passing game struggled to get on their feet when Nick Sirianni was calling plays before he turned things over to Shane Steichen. Uh, it, it was pretty obvious that the passing game simply was not working. And you were dealing with a much younger uh, Jalen Hurts at the time. Uh, he didn't have the the weapons that Jalen Hurts has now. I mean, he's throwing, to, aside from a rookie, Devontae Smith, he's throwing to Quez Watkins. He's throwing J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. Remember that dude? He was throwing to Greg Ward. Through the first seven weeks, um, and you had a quartet of running backs. I mean, you had you you had Jalen Hurts, who was really a run first quarterback at this point. Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, and Kenny Gainwell in his rookie season. The Eagles led the NFL in rushing yards per game in 2021. Hurts ran for 784 yards and 10 touchdowns, all before the invention of the tush push. By the way, but it's hard to beat good teams when you're one dimensional. And we saw that with the 2021 Eagles. They were, I think, 0-7 against playoff contenders. They had the eighth lowest passing yards per game, just over 200 yards passing per game. And good defenses, like we saw in the playoffs that year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, were able to stop the Eagles' offense because they were one-dimensional. Now, here in 2024, 
the Eagles are they should not be as one dimensional. Right. You've got A.J. Brown. You've got a more experienced Devontae Smith. Dallas Goddard will be back at some point, too. Maybe Jahan Dotson starts to get into the mix at some point here. Um, you know, there's I would love to see the Eagles make a trade for Cooper Cup. I don't know what it would cost to get him. I think if it costs you a second round pick, I don't know if I swing that deal. The Eagles already gave up a third round pick for Dotson, which is looking to be a disastrous trade. They are getting nothing from Jahan Dotson, and you gave up a third-round pick for him. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins was just traded for a fifth-round pick. And I know Hopkins doesn't, I mean, he's not the player he once was, but certainly more productive than Jahan Dotson has been. And Paris Campbell isn't getting the job done. So, you know, Cooper Cup, yes, please. I might do a second-rounder for Cooper Cup, but I need to see this passing offense perform. I need to see this passing offense look coherent. And so far here in 2024, it has been very up and down. The Eagles are living with the big play to A.J. Brown, really. That has been their best source of passing offense, is just getting A.J. Brown one-on-one with somebody, throwing it up there and hoping that he can get the job done. That only works for so long. And against good teams, it doesn't work for long at all. But the Eagles are, here in 2024, better positioned to fix the passing game than they were in 2021 because they have A.J. Brown, because they have a better thrower in Jalen Hurts than what he was in 2021. Hurts is just a better quarterback. He just is. He's a much better quarterback than he was in his first full season as a as a passer. But... The Eagles need, even against a team like the Bengals, and especially against teams like the Commanders, you know, they're going to end up, they're going to play the Cowboys before too long. The Rams are, are are struggling right now, but the Rams are a team that can give you problems. They're going to have to play the Ravens in Baltimore. Like, you're not going to be able to beat these teams by only running the football. Yes, utilize the run. You can even, if you want to establish your identity with the run game early, that's fine. But this team's passing offense is still not clicking. They're, they still are not utilizing these guys in creative ways. They're still not finding ways to scheme guys open. This is still an offense with a lot of curls, with a lot of verticals, with a lot of, hey, AJ, try and beat this guy. Hey, Devonte, try and beat this guy one-on-one. We'll throw it into a tight window. That's why one of the reasons Hertz has had so many interceptions of late is because the scheme isn't fooling anybody. And so you're just kind of, you're hoping that AJ Brown can win these one-on-one battles And a lot of the times he does, but a lot of the times he doesn't also. So it's good for the Eagles to be a running team right now to have that identity for Saquon Barkley to eat. Absolutely. Let Saquon eat. He is red hot. And yes, when those one-on-one go balls are there for A.J. Brown, go ahead, throw those things. But there needs to be some consistency in the offense. They still haven't scored a first quarter point. I said they were going to do it last week, and they didn't. I think they'll do it this week. I'm just going to keep saying that every week until it happens because it has to happen at some point. Every other team has scored a first quarter point except for the Eagles. And the Eagles try to establish the pass early in these games, and that's why they're struggling so much at the beginning of games. Eventually, teams are going to start to to cue in on Saquon Barkley, and that might start this week. So the Eagles have got to get the passing game up and going. When they finally get that going, I think this offense is going to be really, really hard to stop. But Jalen Hurts just, he needs to start playing like the stud passing quarterback he's being paid to be. Now, last week against the Giants, he didn't have to be that. And and look, if Saquon comes out and he's rushing for 180 yards again, then fine. Don't put the ball up 40 times. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. But we have to see something in the passing game that's going to give you confidence that when the running game isn't there, they have another tool in their tool belt. And right now they don't. I think in order for the Eagles to win this game on Sunday afternoon against the Bengals, Jalen Hurts has to have his best game of the season. He's got to have his best game of the season. He's got to distribute the ball around. He's got to use the middle of the field. Yeah, use Grant Calcaterra a few times if you have to. Get get him the ball. You know, if Jahan Dotson's open over the middle, get him the ball. Paris Campbell, whoever, whoever you're using, whoever you're running out there aside from A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, and then you've got to find creative ways to open up space for A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Don't make it so that it's a one-on-one every single time. So I'll give you my prediction on that game in just a second. Let's run down the rest of the slate. And there's a lot of 
big lines this week. There's not a lot of close games out there uh, for, for fans to really sink their teeth into. The Detroit Lions, the best team in the NFL right now, as far as I'm concerned, 11 and a half point favorites at home against the Tennessee Titans. And I think that, you know, I, I think the Lions will will cover that. Uh, you've got the Packers in Jacksonville taking on the Jaguars, and the Packers are four point favorites on the road against the Jaguars. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Eagles are a three point uh, underdog. Uh, the Bengals are three-point home favorites, so Vegas really sees this game as being pretty much uh, right down the middle. Also looking in the 1 o'clock window, good game between the Falcons and the Buccaneers. The Falcons are two-and-a-half-point favorites on the road against Tampa. Tampa, uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin both probably not playing in this game on Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then looking in the 4 o'clock window, a uh, good game in Seattle. The Buffalo Bills are three-point road favorites against the Seahawks. Uh, I kind of like the Seahawks in that game a little bit, I think. Uh, yeah, I kind of like the Seahawks in that game. Um, you've got the the Saints. Remember how great the Saints were early in the season? How scared we were of the Saints? They have fallen apart. Um, they are seven-point road underdogs. Uh, the Chargers, seven-point favorites at home to the Chargers. The Chargers should never be a sure bet, but uh, that's how far the Saints have fallen so far. Uh, then on uh, in, in the other 420, one of the other 425 window games, you've got the Commanders hosting the Bears. The Bears are three-point road favorites. Jaden Daniels, again, not playing in this game, uh, which is why Chicago is favored in that one. Uh, I do like the Commanders. Um, I think, I mean, I do like the Bears to win that game in Washington. Uh, and then the marquee, the marquee matchup of the weekend is the Sunday night game between the Cowboys and the 49ers. The 49ers four point favorites at home against Dallas. I think that game's going to be close. Uh, I am picking the 49ers to win that game as tough as things have been for San Francisco. Things have been just as tough for Dallas. These two teams right now on the outside looking in in the playoff picture, and their seasons are not headed in the right direction. So one of these teams is going to get buried here in this game in terms of the standings. And I don't really have a great feel for which one of those teams it's going to be. But the vibes are very bad for both of the Cowboys and the 49ers. I mean, really, and, and we were saying, I was saying this going back to the preseason. I really wish I'd stuck to my guts and picked both of those teams to miss the playoffs because the vibes around Dallas about not spending, about not adding anybody during the offseason, about the, da the the Dak Prescott salary uh, contract stuff, uh, C.D. Lamb and all that, there were just, and Jerry Jones continuing to pop up and say dumb and stupid things, coming off of that horrific playoff loss to the Packers at home, just awful vibes. As bad as the vibes were with Philadelphia, Dallas, just as bad. Those vibes, just as bad, finishing up, the 2023 season. And I didn't think that team had a good look about them in 2024 at all. They had a great week one. And since then it has really been shaky. I mean, they're Owen three at home and they've gotten blown out every week at home so far, uh, but they're coming off a bye. So that gives uh, Dallas a, an opportunity to kind of uh, make things right a little bit, but just some, some damning quotes too. in some of the, the papers, uh, some of the, uh, it, was an, it was an article from talking to former Dallas players um, about who are now with other teams talking about how playing for Dallas was such a distraction. Like these tours that come through the stadium, these guys have to disrupt their, their lives. They have to disrupt their, uh, their flow in, in order for, uh, in order for them to, to have to deal with these tours that are going through. Like they're so happy to be someplace else and just focus on football. What's going on in Dallas. It's a bad scene. And then the 49ers, Ayuk getting injured, uh, you know, the, the, the Christian McCaffrey still not back the the injuries on defense. Like that's just, the Super Bowl loser hangover curse is real. We saw it with the Eagles last year. We've seen it with every Super Bowl loser. That is not the Chiefs and the Patriots. It didn't have Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes as the quarterback. It happens every year. It should not surprise anyone that the San Francisco 49ers are struggling. I just I picked them to win the division just because I didn't see any, anyone else in the division capable of knocking them off. And I, they still might not. But they're just, they are they are not headed in the right direction. So that is a game on Sunday night that, of course, either way, Eagles fans are going to be happy with the outcome of that one. All right, let's get to my Eagles-Bengals prediction. Eagles, again, three-point road underdogs. Uh, yeah, three-point, so the, the Bengals three-point home favorites. Um, I don't know if the Bengals are a good team or not. You know, the record would indicate that they're middling. But they've got a really good offense, but they've got holes, but they've got a good defense, but it's uneven. It sounds like the Eagles, doesn't it? I think if this game were played in Philadelphia, I would probably pick the Eagles to win. 
Uh, but I think in Cincinnati, and the Bengals need this game more than the Eagles do in terms of where they are in the standings and playoff history. You know, they, you fall to three and five. As I mentioned in the interview, your chances of making the playoffs are very slim. Uh, so the Bengals, I think, need this game a little bit more. Uh, I think it's going to be a relatively high-scoring affair. I think the Eagles are going to put up some points. I think it's going to come down to a turnover. I think the Eagles are. I think the Eagles are going to create a make a turnover. Jalen Hurts uh, throws an interception, or there's a fumble somewhere along the way, and the Bengals end up pulling away in this game. I'm going to say the Bengals end up winning this thing, 30 to 26. That's my prediction for Sunday afternoon. Eagles, Bengals. Again, I don't think it's a loss that should be devastating to Eagles fans. Uh, it's a tough place to play, tough place to go into, and the Bengals are better than their record would indicate. Um, I would think that the Eagles could right the ship as long as the offense looks competent. I think we'll feel okay uh, about losing to the Bengals in Cincinnati. But we'll see. We'll see. It is a game the Eagles could win very easily. I think it's like a 60-40. Um, you know, that's kind of how I feel. Like 60-40, the Eagles uh, lose this game on Sunday afternoon. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this edition of Eye on the Enemy. I want to, again, remind you to check out all of the podcasts here at the Eagles Pin Pool Network. And you can check out my stuff over at BleedingGreenNation.com as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time right here on Eye on the Enemy. Thank you.